So last time we made our three stained glass feathers and today we'll be making this Sri Yantra sacred geometry. I'll go over everything from cutting the glass to making the ring that holds the pieces together and we'll finish up with those three feathers and connect them together to make our big dream catcher. So I've got my beginner's tools and equipment video. If you haven't seen that yet, I'll link that down below for you for your reference. All right, it's gonna be a good one. Let's get started. Okay, so I've got the Sri Yantra pattern here. I'm sure you guys could find this easily online. This one in particular is about 12 to 13 inches in diameter, which should match our three feathers that we just did perfectly in size. Those are about six to seven inches in length. Okay, so I've also made two copies. So we'll cut one up and we'll keep the other one to lay the glass over to match. Also, I've gone ahead and shaded out the parts that we will be cutting and also numbering each of them so we don't get confused on which triangle goes where and also the orientation of them. And now we have the glass that I've picked out. We're gonna go with this iridescent opalescent glass. And since it's not see-through, I'll need to cut these pieces up and place them over to trace. So this tool is the running pliers. We'll use that to break the glass at the score line. And this is the grozing pliers. This is used to chomp away at the glass if it's not cut perfectly or we can trim some of the glass as well. This is the glass cutter with the carbide wheel and a pen to trace the pattern onto the glass and my scissors to cut the paper up. Okay, let's go ahead and cut this pattern. Okay, I've cut up my pieces here and I've also got the pattern ready for our glass when we cut the pieces. So we have a total of 43 triangles, 43 pieces to cut. I'm gonna try and see if I don't lose any of these triangles here and that would be a miracle. Okay, I'm gonna start with the bigger pieces to get them out of the way and also that they are a lot easier to cut. Starting out, I'm actually gonna use one of the corners so we can save one cut right there. Just line it up all the way to the end and let's go ahead and trace it. So remember when you cut the glass, it runs along the line in a straight line mostly, or you can curve it, but basically if we cut here, this line will go all the way to the end and break off at that point. If we cut over here, this line will run all the way down the glass. I don't wanna do that, I want to save the glass, so I'm doing a little cut right here and we can maybe use that other triangle after with some of these other pieces. So here's my glass cutter with the palm rest to apply pressure as you're pushing down on the glass. So here Here's how it works. So this is the running pliers. Use the line on the pliers, line it up with the score line on the glass. And once they're nice and straight, go ahead and squeeze the pliers. And you have a broken glass piece. So now I can cut this piece and go from end to end. And then we'll run it all the way through with some pressure. Same thing, line it up. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's put that down here. Just trying to see which triangle we can use for this little piece here. Let's try number two. Oh yeah, I wanna make sure that I number these as well in case they get moved around. Okay, let's try it with this one. This will give you good practice since all of these are straight cuts. Some are big, some are small lines, but basically we're doing straight cuts, getting good practice on this. Okay. Good, they're breaking really nicely. So I'm pretty happy with the cutting here and I don't think we need to grind much, so that's gonna be really nice to save some time. Okay, let's do the last line. Just tracing over and do, applying some pressure. Not so perfect, but still pretty good. Okay, I'll do this for the rest of the triangles and we have 41 more triangles to go. So let's get this on a time lapse and I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, we're down to the last two small pieces on this pattern. I've got number 38, it's that small, and number 40 that that tiny piece. Most likely you'll have to use your grozing pliers to break it. See if this one will break. 
All right. Okay, that's good. And our last one. Look how tiny that is. So tiny. Okay, just two cuts. Let's go with this first cut. All right, that broke off pretty good. Whoa, it actually broke really nice. That's gonna be a pain to work with though. To copper foil and to grind. Wow. Somehow we missed this piece. Let's sweep a little bit. Go with this corner. So we'll break the line from this end all the way to this side. Draw our pliers, lining up the line, and squeeze. Okay, that was nice. And just trace the line while applying some pressure, of course, lining up the lines. There we go. Okay, for the last piece, I have this glass that I wanna use for the center. This has some ripply effect on top and is also iridescent. So I think this would look really nice um, right in the middle. So we're gonna use this glass for this last number here. It looks like that fits pretty well on this side. Since I want the top surface to be this ripply effect, I am turning the pattern upside down so when I cut it, it'll be right side up with that front face. Okay, just one cut for us here. Not too bad. We can clean this up. And we'll use the grinder a bit for this one too. Okay, we're done with our glass cutting. So next up, we'll do some glass grinding to clean these pieces up a bit so they fit nicely together and they line up correctly. The glass grinding is pretty straightforward. Just take your time on your piece as you're grinding it down little by little and keep checking with the pattern and see how it fits. The more precise your glass piece is to the pattern, of course, the better your overall project will look. But don't dwell on it too long, just make sure all the pieces are nice and straight and that they line up correctly. So after we're done with grinding, we'll do some quick rinse in some water and then dry them off for the next step for copper foiling. Okay, so we've got our cut and cleaned glass pieces here and we're now ready for the copper foiling step. So what we'll need is a pair of scissors. I have my copper foil tape here in 7 30 seconds of an inch width. For this work, I'm using the silver backing copper foil tape. So for this piece, you'll see the silver through this glass and I won't be doing patina on it. I want to keep it silver, so I'll be using the silver backing copper foil tape today. And we'll need our FID tool to burnish the foil onto the glass. You can use pretty much anything you want. This is a wooden stick or my Palo Santo stick. So we'll start off by peeling the tape. Place the edge of the glass onto the copper foil or place the copper foil tape onto the edge of the glass. And I like to leave a little bit of tape over one of the edge and you can go ahead and fold that over. We'll work our way around and wrap the tape and keep going until you come back to the beginning. And then just cut that off and fold this right over to complete the wrap. Then just go ahead and push down on the sides. Get the corners, get all the sides. We'll continue to burnish the foil and then we'll be ready for the next step. Okay, we're ready to do some soldering. This is a great mask to filter all the soldering fumes. I'll link that down below for you guys so you can take a look. Got my latex gloves to keep all the solder and the flux off my fingers. My soldering iron with the quarter inch tip and the holder with the wet sponge. And my soldering station set at about 750 degrees Fahrenheit. I've got the flux here to use for the soldering and my 6040 solder. Okay, let's get started. So I'm basically tacking each piece together, starting from the center and basically spiraling outward. So just add some flux and a dab of solder to hold each point together. Most of them are meeting at point to point, but some are from point to edge. Keep going until every piece is tacked together 
but I did it one by one, making sure that each piece is perfectly on the pattern, since one mess up in a triangle could throw off the symmetry of the Sri Yantra. The only thing that I did run into was that the triangles were cut a little bit too small, so the points didn't really touch, and I had to fill some of those gaps with solder to connect them. But otherwise, they all lined up pretty nicely. Once the pieces are all held together, I started soldering the top surface, and then after we're done with that, I turned it over and did the same thing on the back side. And then it's time to do the edges of each triangle. So we have 43 triangles. Each side of the triangle needs to be soldered. So that's 43 times three, which is 129 sides to solder. So that's a lot of soldering. So I hope you guys got a lot of good practice from this. Make sure when you're soldering the edges, Keep them level and horizontal as you're filling the sides with solder. So that may be the hardest part that we have to do. And next up, we're gonna make the ring that goes around the Sri Yantra. Okay, so for the ring, we're gonna use this brass rod that I found. You can solder onto brass. So we'll get that from Lowe's. Let's go to Lowe's, grab the hardware, and then we'll come back and finish our project. rod and survive that register so I'm just doing a little bit of cleaning with some steel wool and now I'm just bending it and trying to match that circle pattern the brass is pretty soft so just go ahead and work your way around the rod and keep bending it little by little until you match that circle pattern and I trim the ends off with some cutter and I do this just a little bit at a time just to make sure that I'm not cutting too much off and as I work it in and close up the circle I just keep trimming off a little bit until they match and there should be six outer tips that should be touching the brass rod and on those points is where we'll be doing the soldering so add some flux and add some solder to those points to tack those pieces to the brass ring to hold it and it might take a little bit of time to heat that brass but once the solder melts it should hold together nicely just make sure you have plenty of solder in between and on both both sides for structural strength. Next thing we'll do is add some jump rings to the outside. I'm doing two at the top and planning to connect a chain between them and I'll add three hoops to the bottom to hang my three feathers. Use a needle nose pliers to help hold the rings in place. Next, wash and scrub everything with some soap and water and dry it off. After that, I'm using fine steel wool to scrub everything once more to prep for the polishing step. Apply some polish to all the areas and finish off with a clean dry cloth. Last thing we have to do is add a chain at the top for hanging and then connect the feathers. A special thing that I'm doing is adding a clasp or a claw to the feathers so that they can be swapped easily and are interchangeable, say when I make new feathers or have some different styles of feathers and colors. All right, we finally finished our Dreamcatcher project. What'd you guys think about it? I love this design. It came out really nice for me. I still think this is a very doable and a beginner's project. It might take a long time. It's just a lot of work, but very rewarding. Let's wrap it up for this one. Thanks you guys for joining me. Hit that like button if you liked it. Of course, subscribe so we can hang out again, and I'll see you guys in the next one.